Hey everyone and welcome back to another Shadowlands Alpha video. You know, the quality of new zones and the class gameplay, all that stuff is extremely important, but there's another problem that World of Warcraft has had. It's not intuitive when you start. We've played this game for years, we get it. Newbies though? No way! I mean hell, if you've casually played ESO or Guild Wars 2 or something, well, you might come to WoW and it might feel very, very alien. The new player experience of World of Warcraft puts, right now, WoW's oldest content first, and it's got a timeline that makes zero sense, going from Cataclysm, then back in time to expansions, then forward in time again, to a new player that is insane. I mean, seriously, imagine if you logged into like any other game and you had a timeline like that at the start. It's all a bit wild, and the gameplay doesn't really teach people how to play the game that well. Plus, you know, you level up and you get nothing for so many levels, because there's so many levels and only so many skills and talents to actually give out. You know, World of Warcraft, it's always going to lose people, right? Because it's a game. But getting people, new people back in, well, that's something WoW has really sucked at because its new player experience has been pretty darn bad. I've got on good authority that the devs really do care about this, so with the new level squish, the implementation of a 100% cohesive timeline for new players and a bunch more, including, say, leveling times when you get mounts, has Blizzard succeeded? Will what they've done here set them up for future success? First, patrons, thank you. Your support has allowed us kick off the Shadowlands Feedback Initiative. There'll be more on that soon. And also build up our class review team. It will pay dividends for the content soon. You're helping us do Shadowlands well. And of course, there's a lot of cool stuff over there as well, like our monthly loot drop. This time, I'm going to highlight these. Yup, it is space fantasy. Some uh, pretty darn cool stuff. Our studio's art team really loved putting these two pieces together. And of course, you'll get that, plus the rest of the big old pack, including the pin pre-order for priests. Thank you for helping us overcome the virus-related ad issues and getting this content made for everyone. Everyone appreciates what you've done, and with that, let's go. Okay, let's get into Exile's Reach. This is the brand new starting experience for World of Warcraft. Now, if you're an experienced player, you will be able to do other starting zones for the races, but this is really intended for the new players to get into. And we have played the Alliance version on Alpha currently. So, it starts off, you're on a boat. It's actually quite cool how the boat's rocking through the ocean. And on that boat, you learn the absolute most base mechanics. But then, of course, you crash land, and it's a very, very simple premise, right? You're there, you've got to get your people together. There's not much of a story to be told because the story is just inherent in the situation that you're in. So as you're going through this, you fight some very basic enemies, you get your first few levels actually quite fast indeed. And that's quite nice because especially now that we've got the, I guess, a little bit more hybridization of the classes, well, you actually get quite a few abilities. Like, as a paladin, I very quickly had Word of Glory, Shield of the Righteousness, Judgment, uh, Crusader Strike, Consecration. It really did feel quite good getting those initial levels. And what I really liked is, after about five minutes of getting off the boat, well, you ran into a treasure, and then decently shortly after that, you also ran into a rare mob. Now, that's not really stuff that the NPCs around told you to go and get, so you would just naturally bump into them, which does a pretty darn good job of tutorializing that for new players, which is super important. The more the new players are actually taught to think in the game, well, you know, the, the better. So that happens, right? Now, I just want to talk first about some of the graphical stuff. I I'd say that the initial zone here, it doesn't look as good as Bastion or anything like that, right? But I, I will say, it definitely is obvious that this is built by an experienced team. I'd say that in terms of assets, you know, they sort of feel like higher-end Kata, maybe Mop, sort of early-ish Warlords of Draenor stuff. Of course, there's Ogre stuff, which is basically just the Heimol kit. Overall, though, it does look quite good. It does feel like a modern game instead of feeling very old indeed, which a lot of the WoW starter zones can. So that's good. WoW is putting a better foot forward. Anyway, right, you get your initial back of people together, the survivors of this crash who are, you know, on that island following up from a missing expedition, and you head out to find your leader's son and save them. And you've then come upon, well, the leader's son, 
surrounded by a whole bunch of undead and an acromancer. Now, in this section of the starting zone, they actually teach you, like, item use quests, and they teach you how to do vehicle quests. And what's really quite well designed about the vehicle quest is that there are these large undeads there, and you can only kill them if you use the button on the vehicle's hotbar. Now, to us experienced players, yeah, obviously that makes sense, but again, it actually does force the newer people to pay attention and to actually understand what is going on. And I think it's really about this stage. You know, I had mentioned the hybrid stuff feeling good and getting abilities pretty quickly. It was really at this stage and the next 20 minutes that I started feeling like I was a paladin. You know, not a rat paladin or anything like that, a paladin. I had a little bit of everything and of course, sword and board is what I spawned with. And it did feel pretty good. So with that done, the next phase of questing is, I think, decently noteworthy here because it's a change in pace. First, they tutorialize vendors, so that's good for teaching the new people, and then you branch off into two different areas, one with harpies and one with spiders, and they both feel a little bit different to quest in. And then you'll also get a class-specific quest, which I'll just talk about now. So I was a paladin, and my class-specific quest was tutorializing Divine Shield, and I think that makes sense, right? It's a pretty iconic ability, so you'd want people to be able to appreciate it. Now, the basic thing is you've got to go click in this totem, and if you don't use Divine Shield, and I confirm this, if you just walk into the totem, you will die. So you've got to pop Divine Shield to make it through. And that actually felt quite good. It really did a good job of conveying how that ability feels to use to a newer player. So I thought that was really good. Now, as for the other quests, the spiders and the harpies, this is basically where it went from a completely linear flow to branching out a little bit. And that's really good because that teaches new people what to expect from the flow of quests. And it sort of eases them into navigating around the world for themselves. And then certainly that's also a time where the new quest UI, the sort of 3D marker, that really does come into, uh, into its own. And in terms of the areas, you're like, well, the Harpy one was a bit more open. I mean, it was still a dense forest, but there was lots of places to go. There was a rare there, and there was a treasure there. And then the Spider Cave, well, it was more enclosed. So again, that is just showing you players, like, here are the sorts of things you will be going through. Um, now, one thing I actually did like is you save a druid from the spider cave, and as you were going down into the spider cave, there's all these tiny spiders, and if you walk on them, they just go and squish. And the druid comments as they're on their way up of, you know, oh, I've got to, you know, watch out for the spiders, don't want to squish them, because obviously, it's a druid, they care about nature. And then afterwards, the druid is a bit sad that, oh dear, you know, all of our hijinks have meant that these spiders have lost their habitat. To which the other characters are just kind of like, well, yeah, I guess you could see it that way. The paladin comments, and oh, the light is in, even the smallest creatures, and then the other character quips that, oh, the paladin had said that they actually hate spiders, and then this, you know, the, the paladin said, well, you know, I've got my beliefs in the light, but that doesn't mean I've got to like the spiders that maybe do have the light. Now, the reason I bring that up is because it just put a little bit more flavor into how a paladin would operate, right, and how a druid would operate, and that'll set expectations for the world. It's, I mean, look, it's not high tier storytelling or anything, it's just communicating some flavor, which to a new player who is completely fresh to the world, World of Warcraft universe, you know what, that's actually a pretty darn good job. So, with that stuff done, we then sort of got back together, and then we went over to deal with the ogre problem. Now, on my way to dealing with that ogre problem, what did I find? I found a five-player group quest. Now, of course, if you were playing this not in the alpha, there would be a higher population, so you probably could get some people, but of course, I was a paladin. And I felt pretty hybridy because at this stage, I had Shield of the Righteousness, I had Word of Glory, I still had my, you know, regular Holy Light, right? So I could heal myself, I could do some damage, so I thought, right, I'll try to take this guy out. And I also had a little health potion. So I fought the bear, and I killed the bear but I had barely any health left. It took me way down low, and the fight actually took ages, and I had to use Divine Shield. And there's a little bit of me that's thinking, Blizzard probably know that that bear is soloable by the classes who can generally solo things a little bit better, right? So then the thought is, did they sort of put that quest there to goad people into trying, so that maybe if you're a mage, you'll realize, ah, yeah, I'm a bit of a glass cannon, but maybe if you're another, you know, class and you actually play well, in this case, I had to use my full toolkit, right? How to, you know, had to actually try pretty hard. I mean, okay, there was a charge I got hit by a few times, but whatever. You know, it actually felt like a proper fight. I was actually impressed that they put that in that starter zone. Now, as for the final set of quests that we were doing, well, you know what? They were regular and off-right just killing some ogres. It did tutorialize the type of quest where you've got to kill a named NPC and then pick up an item from it. And I did notice with one of those named NPCs, I stepped inside its, like, swirly, I think it was called Decapitate or something, and it did, like, 20% of my health, maybe 25%. 
Obviously not hard, but it was noticeable and that is a good thing. Hell, in this bit they actually even tutorialized emotes, which I thought was kind of funny. So, with that done, that was it. That was Exile's Reach, bar the end of Exile's Reach, which is a 1 to 5 player dungeon. I actually went into that with two other DPS players, and then two of the NPCs who I've been questing with were our tank and healer. Now, as for the dungeon, I'd say it was very short, it was very simple. In terms of a set piece, yeah, it was pretty good. Like, there was a decent pace to it. I mean, it couldn't have lasted more than five, six minutes. I was surprised that the friendly AI worked so well, actually. Um, of course, to what degree that will work uh, sort of depends. The other players with me had communicated there were some bugs in a previous attempt at doing it, so hard to say there, but at least from my experience, it was pretty good. I will say, though, it could be a bit harder. Now, not necessarily on your health bar, but I think the bosses in this could have more HP. That would just allow for more cycles of their mechanics, so players would get more exposure to them. Now, as an example, the end dragon boss, that was, the, you know, just teaching you like Dragon 101. It would do a wing buffet that would knock everyone back. It would do a frontal cone breath. I'm sure it did a tail swipe. I'm actually not 100% sure. Maybe it did, but you know, Dragon 101. I just wish it lasted a little bit longer. And with the dungeon done, we were spat out back at the entrance for the Alliance forces who had heard of our plight to come and save us. Now through this, and well, of course, they then flew you to Stormwind. Um, now by the time I got to Stormwind and handed in that quest, I had actually got this really very simple transmog set, but one that's pretty iconic of like, you know, just a regular alliance footman, a sort of rookie bit of armor that actually looked pretty satisfying, so I liked that quite a bit. Now, what impressed me is that after I hit Stormwind, things continued to be pretty well designed. So first up, actually arriving in Stormwind and all of that stuff did feel like a high point. Like, as you were leaving the island, the Alliance, like, airship came in. So a good little high point for newer players who are not really experienced with what World of Warcraft stuff is. I like that quite a bit. Certainly, the idea of a bunch of adventurers coming back from a quest is well realized when you hit Stormwind. I'd say it's not a great story, right? It's just a, a sort of a scenario, a situation you go through, but it does a good job of evoking the core fantasy of adventuring with the rest of the Alliance, which I think is probably what Blizzard's goal was. Now, when you actually hit Stormwind, they tutorialize navigation by asking a guard for directions. Again, that's something that will be really good for new players to learn. And by this stage, you're level 10. And level 10 is where you get your first mount. And yes, you get a mount as a reward for doing this uh, starting experience, and I think that is really good. That actually will feel great for a fresh player. You know, they started, they've they've leveled up, they've got a bunch of new abilities, and then they get their mount, and they're kind of set off into the world. I think that's a really, really good feeling to end the starting experience on. Well, not exactly end, because there is a little bit more. So after that, you learn a specialization for your class. That's pretty good. And then you head to the pub, but you get interrupted by a bunch of NPCs who take you to the Battle for Azeroth introduction. Yes, this stuff happens before BFA kicks off. Basically, right, uh, the battle for, well, Teldrassil and uh, Lordaeron, they happen while you are on Exile's Reach, perhaps while you were sailing there, right? Well, basically, you were just off the board away somewhere else. So you come back, and you are taken to the War Council, and you just overhear, you know, Anduin talking about, oh, wow, the, the Horde have done all these terrible things, and then they come up with a plan to send Jaina to Kul Taras. and then they basically say, hey, why don't you tag along with Jaina? Go there and see, you know, how she can get these new allies on board with us. So, yes, you end up going there. Now, Technically, is it a little bit weird that you as a rookie are just going off with Jaina instantly? I mean, you could see that as being a bit weird. Although another side of that could be that, you know, they, they just sort of see you as a promising person, so they throw you off there. And I suppose from the Alliance perspective, maybe they, they had at that time would not have been expecting, like, Kultras to be this massive, well, you know, mess full of combat that, you know, it ended up being. And maybe they thought that the core of the war would actually be on Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms. So there you go. That is it. That is the new player starting experience. Now, there's just a few things that I want to talk about here experientially. So, first up, one unbroken timeline. You start off in Exile's Reach, while you're there, the Battle for Azeroth kicks off, you return home, you head off to Kul Taras. That actually does just... It's just one unbroken timeline, and it's all modern-feeling content. Exile's Reach feels modern, and then you go to Kul Taras, in this case, and Kul Taras does look great. 
So that is World of Warcraft actually really putting its best feet forward. And that is so important for the bounce rate of players to this game. Because a lot of people, they hear about all this WoW stuff. Maybe they hear about the Race to World First and Twitch making headlines. And then they jump into the game and, oh, it's, you know, to them, right? Not to us because we know what it is, but maybe to them it's a bit disappointing or they don't understand things. This is going to do a far better job at actually bringing those players on board. And there's just a bunch of times where, yeah, Blizzard do a decent job in Exile's Reach of teaching you the core of the things that your class has got to do, which is really good. Now, for the overall leveling experience, this is what it's like for new players. You do Exile's Reach, and then you go into BFA. I believe, though, that the rest of the world is still somewhere that you can quest, and if you are doing stuff on another character, there's like a setup with Chromie where at level 10 you can just go do any continent you want to actually sort of get to level 50. So overall, I think, even for older players, there's just like a more cohesive experience. Now, in terms of other things, well, the level squish has had another really good benefit. It means that when you look at your spell book and your talents, most levels are giving you something. Not every level, but most of them, right? And they've even got spell ranks, which I think will also help out with that. It does feel a lot better than it does now, where, you know, you get a few levels, but you don't actually get anything for it. Then another point, flying. So yes, you do get apprentice riding at level 10. 10. Then journeyman riding is at level 17 for 47 gold. Expert riding is level 25 for 237 gold. Then artisan riding is level 27 for 4,750 gold, with master riding being at level 30 for, again, 4,750 gold. And I suppose with that, I'm, I was just thinking, like, if you were leveling up through, say, Wrath of the Lich King, you really would need to get your flying pretty early on if you were doing things like Storm Peaks or Ice Crown, which, of course, rely on flying. There's maybe sometimes there where I feel like you're getting flying just a little bit early, and I feel like Blizzard could maybe pace that out a bit better. But I think for just throwing a bunch of fun progression at people quickly, yeah, it'll do. And also, I mean, if you look at those flying costs... I don't think a new player is going to be getting the really fast riding anyway. That's still going to be there as a, a larger thing for them to achieve as they continue leveling up their character. And then finally, in terms of leveling times, I've seen reports in Alpha that, like, basically hitting level 50 is about 12 hours. Now, if the Shadowlands core leveling experience is then another sort of 8 to 14 hours like it would have been with BFA, then I guess level 1 through 60 could be, what, at a base level, maybe 20? to 30 hours depending on how fast you go of course i imagine heirlooms and stuff could change that so that's that's roughly what's going on there with the leveling experience it's a good bit more faster but if you think about it right you start your character you do exiles reach you do the battle for azeroth leveling stuff and then you just go straight into shadowlands you're kind of getting high quality tightly crafted content for the entire thing and then even if you're an experienced player well if you're leveling a new character and you've missed out on playing an expansion you could play that entire expansion storyline as level 10 through 50, which I think would actually feel pretty darn good. And also just as a point, in terms of scaling, yeah, like I went to Kul Taras on my level 10 or 11 character and it felt like I was fighting level 10 or 11 mobs. Now I understand how a bit of that could feel kind of weird, but I will say for the overall health of the game, I absolutely do think that that was the right decision for Blizzard to go with. And I do think this is going to actually pay, or they're going to get big yields from this. I I, basically, I I heard in the grapevine that they put quite a lot of effort and thought into like redoing sort of the flow of leveling up in the game with the intent that, yeah, you know, it's, it's not that great right now. And for new players, well, it needs to be good because the new players are the lifeblood of the game. You know, they, they come in, they replenish the losses that any game naturally gets. And I think they've done a decent job so far. I'll probably have to do a full leveling experience on beta, like not via Exile's Reach and not via the BFA zones to actually give you full opinions there. But suffice to say, I'm actually really impressed. And while this is not going to impact the day-to-day -day life of you and me instantly, it is going to be very good for the health of the game. And that is very important indeed. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, WoW now has an entry point that makes sense. And in many ways, Modern Warcraft story, it does begin at like BFA through Shadowlands, you know, all that cosmic forces chart stuff. So I think starting at BFA, moving to Shadowlands, that does make a lot of sense for a new player experience. And as new expansions are added, I think that means that things will still feel natural. And then should Blizzard ever want to look at this again though, well, they could quite easily just make it so that you land into Stormwind 
Baldur Orgrimmar from Exile's Reach, only to have Anduin, instead of talk about the start of the Fourth War, instead talk about maybe the events of the Shadowlands pre-patch. And then that could send us straight into Shadowlands, so you could get 10 through 50 in Shadowlands, and then, or 10 through 60 in Shadowlands, I guess, and then, you know, the next expansion after that. So, yeah, I think you get the point here, though. Blizzard have actually put time and effort into setting themselves up for future success. For new players, this will be far better, and for existing levelers, well, leveling will be faster now, right? We've seen those leveling times, about 12 hours, and I'm sure that will only get faster as people optimize their routes and do all of that stuff. This really is good for the fundamental health of World of Warcraft. No, it's not going to make the endgame stuff better or the Shadowlands content better, but we've got to think about the big picture of the health of the game, and this certainly is helping that out. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the zone down below, and with that, I'll see you next time.